SGC here, and we are back for before and after. Continuing on with our Studio Ghibli Fest, Castle in the Sky. Released back in 1986, directed by Miyazaki, and also still produced by Iseo. And, um, this is known as Laputa, Castle in the Sky, in Europe and Australia. Interesting to note. And it's written by Miyazaki once again. Joe Hisashi is back for music. Now, cinematography-wise, we have one dude this time. Or person. I looked at for Nausicaa, there's four people who was listed for cinematography. And this time we have one person. So this runs off at 124 minutes. So so if you didn't know what this is about, it's basically a young boy and girl in the late 19th century uh, in an attempt to keep a magic crystal from a group of military agents while searching for a legendary floating castle. And yeah, I watched this one to death. I watched it a lot in Cantonese once again, so this exists for me in Chinese most, mostly, so it'll be interesting to get back into the groove of the Japanese track. And seriously, this... Nausicaa is... is like close to my heart because of just the craftsmanship of Top Craft and, and the fact that it, that it just was so different. Of the world building, the character designs, the creature designs, the scope of the story. And now we have Castle in the Sky, which, I swear, it's like, it does everything correctly. So, interestingly enough, um, Castle in the Sky is under the Studio Ghibli banner. The official first movie, I would, as I would assume, technically. And you can really see, having watched Nausicaa... Um, you can really see the difference here in the sense where Nausicaa was a very Nausicaa female led and then we have Asbel who's just there but didn't really matter but now we have clear two leads like in this one what are their names I'm horrible so in this one it's totally different we start the story with Pazu and then we meet Shita and and they are, like, basically the two main characters. Pazu, granted, is not the whole, like, main narrative main character. Because everyone's after Shita and he's just, like, there to help them. Uh, one thing I did forget to mention in my Nausicaa review is that there was no romance. And I'm so happy there is no romance here once again. And from just memory... I love this movie in terms of it hitting up all the points of a great adventure story, of this self-discovery of a hidden world. You have factions at play. You have their like you have different people going after different things. You have the the, the grandma crew and they're like full of great characters of just personality. And then you got the military agents who's just trying to get this thing. And then there's Shita and Pazu. And then the world building of just the mechs. Of just this hidden hidden city type of thing. And then you also have just the airships. A flight that carries over from Nausicaa. Which I really love. And, and there's no romance. Like I was saying. But yeah. So I definitely cannot wait to go through this one once again. Um, this one isn't based off a of manga, and that's one thing I know is different from Nausicaa. I feel that, from memory, this is, the scope is huge, but not as big as Nausicaa, and the pacing actually lets you breathe and go to places and meet people, so it's not like a snapshot of things that happen like in Nausicaa, so I do appreciate that, and I do wonder if Miyazaki 
was saying, hey, I gotta treat this like a movie versus like my manga adaptation. And then he knew the ending from the manga, but but the manga wasn't done, so there was a lot of details that he threw into it. But here, it's like, this is a complete movie, and everything is said and done here. I can't, like, tell a backstory in a manga type of thing. So I do appreciate, like, just all the characters that our main cast meets, and they have their own sort of story. And it's told in a way where it's good enough. You don't need to know anymore, but it's like, hey... If we did, that would be nice. Like, the family that Pazu lives with, and you don't get much out of them, but they're, like, really core in the beginning. And then you get the grandma crew and the agents and this, like, like this other beings in the sky type of thing. It's, like, this history and all that. So definitely cannot wait. So talked enough. I mean, I feel like these things are going to be a lot longer than our typical before and afters, but whatever. Anyways, that's it. Um... So I cannot wait to go through this. So this is before, and this is after. Okay, number two is down, Castle in the Sky. Yep, so this, I think, definitely flows a lot better in terms of pacing. It is two hours long, and it does feel long if you know the actual time. Like, I think I was at hour one, and I was like, oh, there's still an hour left. And then when the movie was almost ending, things were crashing, and I was like, oh, there's 15 minutes left. That's that's really quick. So yeah, overall, I really enjoyed everything. Like, there's the Miyazaki's sort of subtle animation. Like, one moment I didn't notice when I watched this, like, so many other times, was how Pazu licks his lips before... You know, playing the trumpet in the very beginning. There's actually two moments in the film where I actually forgot existed. And it felt like I watched an extended version. One was when Pazu gets paid with the gold and he leaves. And just before he gets abducted by Dola, he like was going to throw the coins on the ground. Didn't remember that. And also the part where he's oiling the the pirate ship. Like that whole montage of them like doing things around the ship. That one sort of escaped me. But beyond that, everything was just what I remembered. Or it felt familiar. So I think this one I watch a lot of. So it was more of noticing the really fine details. Just noticing just... Comparing it to Nausicaa, like how we have Dola now, and and again, it it's interesting how Miyazaki writes his like his woman characters, like how in the in Na Nausicaa we had the princess and she was very you know strong willed, really snarky when did she did talk, and we got Dola here who's like a granny but she can still handle herself and is a leader and. It was great. And just to have this whole crew and Pazu and Shita, like I said in the before segment, just the whole like sheer amount of characters that don't really mean anything, but they do narratively to the characters. Like the mining community and even like the old guy underground when they discover them in the ground. And also, the fact that the, the, was it Colonel? No. The General, like, he started showing more of himself, of just, like, his character and all that. I sort of wish there was more to play with, but granted, it was supposed to be, like, a huge twist. And then his character starts coming out in terms of, like, who he actually is and what his deal is. There's that. Animation top-notch. Joe Hisashi is is great in terms of the music. Like, I was watching the very beginning of it, and, like, I was watching it on TV, thank you, Netflix, and, and like, my mom stopped what she was doing. She's like, she just looked at it, and was like, oh, it's just, like, this music is so memorable, and just everything. It's like, because, you know, it's been a while since she heard it, or I've heard it, and it's but you know it once you hear it. So that's always, like... The, the craziness of just like memorable tracks. Like in a sense it's sort of like John Williams. But in a sense there's less. I don't know. I don't know. Like I feel like when you hear John Williams you know it's him. 
His Hisashi, do you know it's him? I, I don't know. I haven't listened to him enough. I mean, so it's going to be interesting to be like, can Grave of the Fireflies, which I'm watching next, like with a different composer, like what's going to go down in terms of the music? So yeah, pacing, characters, animation... It's pretty top-notch. It's interesting how this is a very Western story, but yet spirited away that comes out a few years later is the one that's like internationally recognized, you know, with an Oscar and, and you know, when did Spirited? 2001. And this came out in 80, 86. So like, you know, 14, 15 years later, but this story, I feel, is much more safe in the sense where it's just your classic, you know, forgotten race, like type of like Atlantis type of vibe, um, and your discovery and all that stuff. So it's interesting how Spirit Away, it's like this much more niche Japanese cultural theme thing, and yet, I mean, it's great that it got recognized and all that. But it's interesting how, like, when this came out, I do wonder how people saw it. And especially in the West. Because Castle in the Sky existed for me. I mean, the only new, um, like, Ghibli, Ghibli stuff that I've seen in theaters was Wind Rises and Princess Kaguya. Everything else, for some reason, I never watched in theaters. Even though I have and seeing things like 2001 like I don't understand why I don't think I was going to theaters in 2001 maybe maybe that wasn't a thing I'm pretty sure I wasn't that wasn't something I was doing but I was still watching movies another thing that I really enjoyed is the flight there's so much stuff that flies the mechanics the little gears and everything that that they animate like the mining in the beginning the the ships and the planes I guess ships, planes, just like the gears or like when they go into that thing that pops out of the pirate's ship and that the gear just turns and just like lots of stuff. Really enjoyed that. Definitely reminds you of how Wind Rises has that, but literally there's not a lot of flight. Or am I remembering it wrong? Or just like ironic how I really enjoy all the ones that have flight in it but wind rises literally does not have flight in it but it's about flight so yeah i i definitely can't wait to sort of rewatch that finally um but anyways talking too much already so yeah everything is great like castle in the sky definitely one of the safer ones to go to if you're introducing to a friend i actually do i actually introduced kiki to someone who's never seen ghibli and that was her first ghibli film and i think that was pretty good but overall you know Good action, good characters, good animation. And yeah, I'm just going to cut it off there. So uh, that's it. Uh, keep liking, keep watching, and subscribe and share because sharing is caring. And that's it for this um, before and after for Castle in the Sky. See ya.